Now to know your mind. We want to help you navigate the toll the pandemic is taking on your emotional health. And today, we're focused on the skills of resilience. With me now is psychologist Thea Gallagher. She's a clinical psychologist and assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania. She is also the director for Penn Center for the Treatment and Study of Anxiety. Thanks so much for being here, Thea. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tracy. So we hear a lot about resilience. Can you tell us what that really means? Well, I think it means a lot of things, but I think the main takeaway is really how do you handle adversity? How do you look at it? How do you um, let it shape you? Um, and how do you kind of keep getting back up, keep getting back on the horse? Resilience is a lot about how do we navigate tough situations and keep moving forward. And it's not something you have or you don't have. It's a set of skills that you can improve on, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's about saying a good or a bad week isn't based on what happens. It's based on how I respond to it, what I do with it, what I do about it, um, and realizing you have more agency and control over some aspects of your life than you probably realize. Yeah, the idea that you might not be able to control something, but you can control how you see it. You can see it in reality, but you can also say, hmm, I might be able to do something about that, or things might get better. It's the way you view it is part of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like perspective taking. You think about the pandemic, you know, a lot of our challenges with the pandemic, we couldn't take up with the manager of the pandemic. So we have to <laughs> radically accept that some things are hard and challenging and just the way they're going to be. But what are the things that we can control? Um, what are the things that we can continue to shape to make our lives better, even through a very difficult situation? And how can we take care of ourselves? We hear a lot about self-care. That doesn't really mean many petties. It means, you know, sort of figuring out what you need and caring for yourself as if you would care for someone who is really struggling. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I think it's this kind of idea of radical self-care, which is about really making it a routine, scheduled, active part of your life that is non-negotiable. And um, it can change on a day-to-day -day basis, too. Like what might be working for you one day, one week, one month might not be what's working for you the next. And so it really needs to be tailored to you and your specific needs and what helps you to disconnect, recharge, um, feel like you're getting rejuvenated to be able to go back and tackle all the things in your life um, that you have to tackle. So really thinking of what's a personalized self-care plan for me that works, that makes me feel better, um, and, and that really is like a healthy part of my life. And there's also the gratitude component because I think it's really easy in these challenging times to see all the negative, but it's a choice to look for the positive and then be grateful for the positive. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, you know, I really think it's not about an either or mindset, it's about a both and, right? Because there's this concept of almost like toxic positivity that's like, let's make this into a really positive thing. And it's okay to say, this is hard, this sucks, like there are aspects of this I really don't like and don't enjoy, but can I also expand my attention to the things in my life that are good? Um, and for many people, it's about looking at some of the little things, you know, your morning cup of coffee, um, the laughs you have with your toddler, um, you know, the, the phone call with an old friend, um, a good meal, something like that, but really expanding your attention to the things in your life that are good. Um, you know, especially during these times, I think many of us have become more and more grateful for our health, um, and each day that we have that, I think, you know, bringing our attention to that. But I think it's also okay to have moments where you say, I'm, I'm really frustrated, I'm feeling exhausted, um, this is hard, but also how can I look for the things that are good in my life as well. Right, we should make that point too, that resilience isn't about not ever feeling down, it isn't about never hitting a brick wall, it's, it's how you deal with all those things. Yeah, definitely, and it, being honest with yourself when you hit that brick wall, because the worst thing you can do is like, kind of push that down. Or I've heard a lot of people say like, well, I don't have it as bad as some people during the pandemic or other people have it harder than me, or at least I have a job. And you know, it's not the suffering Olympics. I think in some ways you have to, <laughs> we're all suffering in different ways. So giving, you know, acknowledging the ways that you might be suffering and struggling, getting the help you need with that, um, seeking support. And then also though, again, looking for the things in your life that are good, that are bringing you joy. Cause we don't want to take those for granted. And sometimes it's easy to accept the things that are going well in our lives without giving them the credit they need to. Psychologist Thea Gallagher, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Tracy.